Hey everybody, uh, we just wanted to send out another video update. It's been a while since the last one and thought that you would appreciate seeing some videos and pictures of what we've been up to lately. Mm -hmm. Our house sits on about a third of an acre of land. The house itself is about 1,300 square feet. It's 11 meters by 11 meters. It has three bedrooms, two bathrooms, the living room and a kitchen um, and it also has a pretty big wraparound porch which helps keep the house shaded and keeps it from getting too hot. Uh, the porch is about six feet wide. So we're excited about our new home and we're going to give you a quick tour. This is our living room slash dining room. All these handmade shelves and sofa and table. And this is our kitchen. The bathroom at the end of the hall, a guest bathroom, storage room, this is one of the guest bedrooms, this is our bedroom, we're still waiting on a door for our bedroom as well as our bathroom, we have our bathroom here. closet space. So that's our home. Our house is about a kilometer from downtown Kebo near an old airstrip. We're mostly surrounded by cashew trees. We were able to um, clear off a little spot of land behind our house that we could use for agriculture. We um, fenced it off to keep all the roaming animals out like cows and pigs. And we were able to set up a drip irrigation system using drip tape which uses uh, really low pressure so we could just run it off of a 60 gallon tank on a platform about five or six feet tall. Um, we had some pretty good success. We were able to grow greens and lettuce and tomatoes and some other crops. and. Um, even had a lot to share um, with our neighbors. As we were beginning to work on the garden in the backyard, we were noticing that a lot of the neighbor kids were coming over and pitching in and helping and seemed really interested in helping us to plant the seeds and enjoyed watching them pop up. And so we had some extra space and were able to provide little plots for quite a few of the neighbors and they really enjoyed putting in the compost and, gr and bringing seeds over to plant and they came almost every day to water and we even um, able to take home a lot of crops like lettuce and tomatoes back to their families which they're really proud of. And we also have a piece of land that's not too far from our house that's about three and a half acres in size that um, we're thankful that we were just able to get it all um, fenced off with barbed wire which will help keep people and just random animals from roaming in. In the future will be used for our agricultural training center, um, maybe a community garden where women could uh, have plots of land and access to water throughout the year to grow vegetables in the dry season and uh, so we look forward to what God has in store for the future there. I never thought of myself as much of a teacher, still don't really, but Freddie and Raquel asked me to teach some of the English classes at their high school and then later they asked me to teach the religious culture class for the fourth graders. <laughs> So I try and teach the stories to the students in a way that they can remember 
and understand. We usually do an activity like we've acted out several of the stories, kind of like what I would do with one story. One thing that I've noticed, most of my students are Muslim, and one time I was teaching them about the major religions in the world, and when I got to Christianity, a couple of my students plugged their ears so that they wouldn't hear about it. I think that they're taught in their families that they shouldn't listen to those things. And the other day, one of my students asked about a question that I'd had on a quiz, which was, what is the major difference between Christianity and Islam? I explained briefly that Christians believe that Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice. And I was encouraged to see that nobody was covering their ears. Most of the students seemed to be paying attention and thinking about what I was saying. I've also been helping more with the praise team. I'm trying to encourage them to learn new songs so we can take time to learn new songs and then present them to the church. One of the songs that they really seem to like is one that actually my One Story team made based on the story of Paul in Athens. So it's neat to see the connection there between my time here before and my time here now. I have a couple women who are working for me, helping me out around the house. One of them, she came to me, she has a little baby, so she came asking if she could work here. And so she's been coming and cleaning the house for me and uh, she does a really good job. It's nice too because we have a good relationship, her and her husband come over and hang out sometimes. And it's more of a friendship and not just a working relationship. So some of the women, it's nice because they'll teach me how to do things that they do here. For example, there was this root, kind of like a potato, that, I, that one of the neighbors had given me, and I didn't know how to cook it. So Saba came and she helped me cook that. And I think it helps the relationship to show that I need to learn from them. It's not just them learning from me. In the market, it's nice because I have several people that I go to to get vegetables from and they kind of know what I like so they'll say Sarah I have some good cabbage or eggplant or carrots sometimes through that relationship they'll give me an extra tomato or an extra something else <laughs> I am a jambo, a jacatu, a kamati, a alfas. I am a jambo, a jacatu, a kamati, a alfas. I am a jambo, a jacatu, a kamati, a alfas. A lot of kids are really surprised to see that I have blue eyes and so um, they, they're either scared of it and kind of stay away or, or they just come and stare at my eyes and um, some of them have even wondered if I could see. They didn't think I could see because my eyes were blue. People also think it's strange. Here a lot of people don't have much like hair on their arms or legs and so since my arms are pretty hairy a lot of kids like to come around and they just kind of pet my arms and like stroke my here and like even sometimes I've asked if they can have some of it and so they'll like pull one out and take it.
Yo, Abbas, how to go there? No, I pass you on film, I say, leave on a somna. Babata Kala. Life can be hard here. Sometimes you really feel like an outsider. Um, we're foreigner, foreigners in a place where there's not very many of those, and so um, we just kind of don't fit in. And it's taken a while to build relationships with local people. And so it can be kind of lonely here. And sometimes we feel a lack of spiritual closeness with other people. Finding other people who are interested in studying the Bible thinking about what God says to us. Just having that fellowship with other Christians can kind of be lacking. So I guess you could just pray for that we'd be able to, to make friends that um, we could confide in, that we could um, share life with. One thing we always need prayer for here is um, just protection over our health. The rainy season is starting and so what that brings a lot of sicknesses like malaria and typhoid. I also ask that you would pray for um, just good rest. It's hot here and humid at night, and um, we both struggle with fatigue and um, just feel lack of rest a lot of times. So just pray that we be able to get good sleep and, and just have energy to do the work that God's called us to do. We hope you guys enjoyed the video update. We wish we could do it more often, but it's a little bit difficult with the lack of technology and internet access here. But um, we are very thankful for your support financially, your, your prayers and encouragement, um, the emails that we've received and letters of encouragement. And we just, we do ask that you would continue to uh, keep us up to date with what's going on in your lives. And, uh, but yeah, well, we just uh, really appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks. I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> Daddy. <laughs>